you have been tried and have been found guilty of murder in the first degree. It is never with pleasure that this court meets out punishment, no matter how richly deserved. How much more painful becomes the task in this season of goodwill toward men. Nevertheless, it only remains for me to ask if you have anything to say before I pass sentence upon you. John Henry Norton. You shall be returned to the place from whence you were taken. And from there, at the time and place to be arranged, you shall be hanged by the neck until you are dead. And may God have mercy upon your soul. Remove the prisoner. John! Oh, never mind, my dear. Just remember to bring me my Christmas pudding. John! There's a long way between a sentence and the end of a rope, Mr. Holmes. I'll kill you before I die! I swear it! Court's adjourned. Christmas began the moment that man was out of sight. And yet Mrs. Norton, number six, still believes in him. Mm. It's incredible, isn't it? Testimonial to his charm, Watson. Charm being the first requisite of every blue beard. Yes, let me see, what is it? Three widows, two spinsters. <laughs> you really had him the one before last. Yes, and I would have if the star witness hadn't bolted. Holmes, that threat he made against you. Oh, Watson, remind me to buy another A-string, will you? Of course, I know it's all ridiculous, but why do you think he should indulge in such a bluff? Well, you know, the criminal mind travels in devious channels, Watson. Father, don't worry, old chap, because uh, if he sends me cyanide, I just won't take it. <laughs> well, let me play you a carol, Watson. Terror. From prison? He has friends outside. What are you going to do? I'm going to Newgate Prison. We've taken every possible precaution, Mr. Holmes. For example, his food is served already cut, bones removed on wooden dishes, wooden spoons and forks. All the furniture is still is fastened down. But you can see for yourself if you wish. Thank you, I should like to. Christmas gifts for the inmates. Every parcel will be properly examined before it's handed on. I see. Any for Norton? None so far. Uh, this way, please. Thank you. Soon, Holmes, but not quite this soon. 
Just wait. I'll get you. Your neck. Between these two hands. How often do you inspect his bedding? Every morning and evening. Thank you. I think I've seen enough. Don't get to worry you, Mr. Holmes. In just ten days, it'll all be over. Yes, of course. say that visit put my mind at ease. It did? No, didn't it yours? Hmm. Norton's whole career has been built on his ability to inspire confidence. I believe him, Watson. What? You mean you think he's going to, to kill you? I believe he's going to try. <laughs> but my dear fellow, you've seen yourself. How could he get out? That's the question, Watson. Mrs. Norton, sir. Mrs. Norton? How do you do, sir? You have a present for your husband? Just this, sir. A pudding I made for my husband. May I give it to him, please? All parcels for prisoners have to be inspected, Mrs. Norton. Yes, sir. That's what the guard said. Here it is. I'm not very much of a cook, sir, but I do make a nice Christmas pudding. Well, I'm afraid I shall have to spoil its looks a bit. Still, I expect it will taste just as good. exception in your case, Mrs. Norton. Yes, you may. Take her along, Simmons. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Wait. I'll take her myself. You have a visitor, Norton. your Christmas pudding. May I? There's brandy in it and currants. Just the way you like it, John. Oh, you're sweet and thoughtful, Beth. I've been looking forward to this. I'm afraid it's cut up a bit, Norton, but your wife's not responsible for that. Regulations, you know. Yeah, I understand. Is there anything else you want that I can bring you? No, my dear, nothing, thanks. This is all the Christmas present I want. Thanks for letting her bring it to me, Warden. Goodbye, John. ominous cloud continued to hang over our Baker Street flat for all that either of us could do to dispel it. It was Christmas, but there was still the condemned man's threat. If Holmes didn't make light of it, how could I? Merry Christmas, sir. And a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, sir. Go on, old girl.
hurts you. Anything wrong? No, nothing. I see you brought it. Yes, well, no Christmas is complete without a Yule log. Even if they do have to cut it up to fit city flats. Now then, Holmes, what's all this greeting me with a revolver? Is it Norton? Do you believe in intuition, Watson? What, you mean, uh, six cents, that's what I mean? Yes. Why? Well, I was going... No, it doesn't matter. It's this weather, you know. You think he's going to escape, don't you? What? He was still in prison at four o'clock. Oh, I see what you mean, Watson. You mean one mustn't underestimate the resourcefulness of men like Norton. No, naturally, of course not. Mm-hmm. Watson, I'd uh, take it very kindly if you could, uh, well, clear out of here for a week or so. Take a room at a hotel. Oh, why? Well, I, I've, I've some research work to do on uh, blood types. And I think I'd get through it much more quickly on my own. I'll foot the bill, of course. Nonsense. All the same, I wish you'd go. Nonsense. I insist, Watson. There's no reason at all why you should risk your life. Look here, old man. Your danger is quite enough for me. Now, not another word, eh? I'll, uh, make some tea. Nice hot cup of tea. <laughs> Wonderful for the intuition. Who is it? It's loose, Mr. Holmes, the governor of New Big Come in, sir. 
Mr. Holmes, I've come to tell you that Norton has escaped. In view of his threats against your life, I felt you should be warned at once. What's more, I brought a policeman to stand guard at your entrance door all night. Thank you. That's very thoughtful of you, Governor. And we're scouring the city for him now, but, well, in this fog... Yes, of course, of course, I understand. When did he escape? He was in his bunk around 2 o'clock, so it must have been between then and 2.30. How did he get out? The bars of his cell window were sawn through. Don't ask me how he managed it. He used his blanket to slide down to freedom. But I must be getting back. The Smith here will take orders from you till he's relieved. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. Good night, Dr. Watson. Good night, Governor. Come, Smith, take your post. How on earth did he get hold of a hacksaw? That's not important now, Watson. I want you to do something for me. Really? Norton is probably counting on the support of his wife. I want you to go to their house and make quite certain that he gets no help from that quarter. But the police will be there already. Ah, we can't be sure of that. You see, the police are probably working on the theory that that's the last place on earth he'd go. I see, and you think he may be counting on them. All right, I'll go directly, I'm ready. <laughs> It took me some time, what with the fog and the difficulty of getting a cab, to reach Mrs. Norton's flat. When I arrived, the police were already there, making sure that Mrs. Norton did not leave. Of course, Holmes had known they would be, and I suddenly realized he had pushed me out of the flat so that I would not be exposed to danger. I started back at once. <laughs> Smith here. They sent me down here to see if everything was all right. All quiet. Both of them up there? No. The doctor went after Norton's home. Uh -huh. Mr. Holmes is alone now. Uh -huh. Snug in bed while you stand here shivering, eh? The fog does get into one's bones. Uh, would you like a cup of tea? Not half. Listen, I'll take over. There's a cabman's shelter over on the next street. The tea's hot and strong. Just had a cup myself. Thanks. And keep your eyes open. They say that this Norton's a rough one. Uh, I can handle him. It won't be more than ten minutes. Oh, well, don't hurry. Take your time. message for you from the warden, sir. Should I slip it under the door? It's all right. I'll open the door. Mr. Holmes? Yes, over here. You can leave the message on the table there. Yes, sir. I'm holding a gun, Mr. Holmes. Don't move. I told you I'd get you, Mr. Holmes. Now they'll get me. But I don't care. I've had my revenge. Mr. 
Eliza. This is John Norton, the man you want. Take him away. Holmes! Are you all right? Perfectly all right, thank you, Watson. Well, I must say that Mr. Norton, besides being an authority on poisons, was also a deadly shot. Well, well, what happened? Well, I was waiting here for him, and when he arrived, he, uh, he destroyed what he thought was me. So that's why you sent me on that fool's errand. Well, I thought it was safer for you. But you might have been killed! Really, Holmes, you must leave this sort of thing to people who are more used to it. Oh, now, really, Watson, you don't mean to say that you're... Now, you listen to me. The next time this sort of thing happens, I'm going to have you locked up for your own good. The very idea. I'm absolutely furious. Why, I... I... I, I just don't know. That sometimes I think you just need a nurse. Someone passed him a hacksaw. I want that man. It's up to you to find him. I'll give you 24 hours. Otherwise, every god who's on duty in that wing will be dismissed. Do you understand? But, sir... Find him! Those are orders. Come in, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson. I've just issued an ultimatum by staff. I want him to find the man who passed Norton at Hexel. Yes, sir. So we heard. I couldn't have believed that I'd had a man working for me who could be bribed. But that's the only explanation. Mm, perhaps, and then again, uh, perhaps not. There were some packages on this table. Gifts for the prisoners. Has anything arrived subsequently for Norton? Yes, a pudding. But I examined it myself. Well, that's hardly the place to hide a hacksaw, Holmes. No, I suppose not, Watson. Might we uh, inspect the cell, please? If you wish, but you won't find anything there to help you. This way. Pudding came in that. Here's your answer, Governor. Oh, come now, Holmes. A cardboard box with a bit of fancy string round it. Who passed this to Norton? I did myself. After inspecting it, of course. Well, uh, this is what he used to saw through the bars with. That? Watch. Take a look at that. Well, well, how is that possible? What's the hardest substance known? Um, a diamond. Well, this sort of string is usually made to glitter with an application of powdered glass. But if a section of it is made on a stronger base with a coating of diamond dust instead, then you have a very effective cutting tool indeed. And you gave it to Norton yourself, Governor. It's extraordinary. Not extraordinary at all, my dear Watson. Really quite ordinary. After all, diamond dust has been cutting steel for a good many years. Hmm. Shall we go? Oh, Merry Christmas, Governor. Of course. A Merry Christmas, Dr. Holmes. Mr. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. A very Merry Christmas.